Hey guys, Shanti Phillips here, and we're going to bring new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Today, pretty much just going to go out, see if anything different came out. Didn't really look at too much of what came out today, so just kind of kind of go, see if there's anything different, anything on sale today. Also, at the end of this video, be sure to check out, I have a couple different DVD Blu-ray reviews. Just kind of split up the update this weekend that's coming up. Be sure to check that one out this Saturday. It's going to have like Sleepaway Camp 2 and 3, a whole bunch of different stuff. So anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see if we can find anything today. Into Target we go. It seemed a little picked over today in the section, but it looks like what came out today was The Seventh Son, which I heard pretty bad things about this. Let me know if this is worth watching at all, but you know, I heard some pretty bad reviews. Cut Bank, you know, that was that was not a bad movie. That was actually pretty decent. And then The Loft, you know, they don't have the Blu-ray but the DVD of it. And that was kind of one of those movies you watch sort of for cringe sake. It's like a really bad, but like kind of fun, bad, terrible movie. And that's really why you watch it, because the acting too, some of it, is really bad. Now, I don't know if this one came out today or not, Two Men in Town. Like, I don't know much at all about this at all. I don't think I've heard anything about this one. Into Walmart we go. Yeah, so they have that seventh son in here as well. There's not a lot of stuff that came out today, it seems. I think See You in Vahela, I never know how to say that right. <laughs> that one came out today, and that was okay. Let's see if there's anything else over here. But I don't think it was a huge release day. Sometimes, though, they have some different stuff always down here. I look, see if anything, anything different came out today. I think this might be have come out today. Um, I don't know what this is. Uh, Stephen Ray movie, Angels of Darkness. I don't know anything about this at all. So I guess this one came out today. And then I think this was today as well, Alien Battlefield. I don't know about that one either, but it wasn't too much. I can't remember if Roommate Wanted was today or that was a week or so ago. But that was that was an alright one. Some kind of Viking movie. Yeah, not not too much today. It's kind of a small release day for new stuff. Not really even any real different TV shows or anything today as well. Into the hometown buffet we go. And I don't always have the most luck coming in here, but I'll give it a shot. You know, sometimes it's hard to get like protein and stuff, and most of the stuff I get is kind of like the stuff that nobody wants, like the leftover stuff, because I always just get the vegetables and stuff. And I know people always say, you know, I want to lose weight, go to the buffet. The thing is, you can. It's just, oh, it's all about what you go here and eat. It's like, just don't go and eat all the fried chicken and stuff. Yeah, so I just got this kind of stuff, and you know, I didn't want to put butter in the potato, and I don't do that, so I just put sauce in it. I kind of learned that. It's like a trick you can do. Super blandy foodie. Into Best Buy we go. It doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of new release today. I know this one came out today, Let Us Pray, which I'm interested in seeing. Heard some mixed reviews on this one. Let me know, guys, how this one is, if this one's worth checking out. And they do have a few new steelbooks in here, like I think this MASH one is new, and the Star Trek one, I believe, is a new one. You know, these ones have been out, though, the Drive and Fifth, Fifth Element one. And I think, I think the Spaceballs one is a new one as well. Now, this is really weird. For some reason, they're putting, like, these ones in these kind of cases. Like these, like, I don't, what is this about? Like all these ones are put in these kind of protective cases, but these are the only ones in here. It's all universal ones, it looks like. I don't know if people are coming in here and stealing these or what. I don't know if it's because of the movie money. Like, maybe it's like they put it on the front and people would just take it off and, I don't know. That's very, very weird. Let, let me know, guys, if your Best Buys are putting just these ones randomly in these cases, because I do not know what that's about. That's very, very weird. So that's all for this DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Didn't get to go too many places today. Try and go some more stuff next week, though. But thanks again, guys, for watching and subscribing. Now check out some new DVD Blu-ray reviews. The first one I got from Paramount is Hot Tub Time Machine 2. This is the uh, director's cut, you know, the uncut edition of the movie. Um, 
I like this one. I did not like this one as much as the first movie, though. It's basically, though, about, you know, the three of the main characters, except for John Cusack's character, who they kind of wrote out of the movie. And I, I kind of wish he was in that, because I really liked him in the movie. You know, the first one. The first movie, too, was a really fun, really memorable movie. This one was okay, but just a little bit more forgettable, though. The one character, you know, Rob Corddry's character, ends up getting shot in the area and is, you know, dying and they have to go back in time, you know, actually go into the future to try and figure out who it was that did it because his character is pretty bad and was pissing off a lot of people and they believe he came from the future. So the characters go to the future and then try and figure out who the killer was before it happens and that's essentially what it is and the kind of like the weird stuff that happens to them in the future and the kind of adventures and stuff like that. It was okay though. Wasn't anything amazing that has on here though. Uh, deleted extended scenes and a bunch of bloopers and things like that. Um, I liked it, though. If you liked the first movie, definitely worth checking it out. Uh, Kristen Slater, too, has an uncredited cameo in this movie. Uh, the next one from Disney is McFarlane USA, which I like this one a lot. Um, you know, I saw the trailers, too. It was really interesting seeing it. Didn't get to see this one in theaters. But the movie, though, is basically Kevin Costner, who's this football coach who ends up getting fired because he throw a, threw a thing at a student and the student got, you know, injured or, you know, basically got him fired. So he ends up going to a school and the new school... They basically don't know what to do with Kevin Costner's character, and it's a lot of kids there who are like Spanish kids that are, you know, really just, that's pretty much what it is, is like a lot of, pretty much all the kids at the school are Spanish, you know, Mexican students, that's it. And it's kind of like a culture shock to him, and kind of his family, and he ends up deciding to teach the, uh, you know, the track and field team, you know, because that's kind of his way to stay at the school, because they kind of think they're going to have to fire him again, because they don't know what to do with him, because the football coach there doesn't want to work with him, and he doesn't want to have any assistance and things like that. So it's him, you know, teaching the students, and, you know, they kind of, their families, a lot of them don't want them to leave. They want them to do work to bring money into the family. So he has to deal with a lot of different problems. It's like a real positive movie, though, about him teaching these students and then the outcome and things like that. Um, it has on here, though, a bunch of, you know, deleted and extended scenes and some making ofs about the, the true story. Uh, the next one from Alchemy Entertainment. This is a pretty weird movie, like kind of like UHF, the Weird Al movie, sort of. Um, it's a Christian Wake movie. And it's I don't think I don't think it went to theaters, but it's got a whole bunch of people on this. West Bentley, uh, you know, Tim Robbins, uh, Jennifer Jason Lee, which I haven't seen the movie in a long time, is in this movie. Um, it's basically though about Christian Wiig's character who ends up winning all this money in the lottery, and you know she's her character has got you know kind of paranoid problems and all kinds of different issues, and she's you know obsessed with. Oprah and TV shows and she wins all this money in the lottery and ends up going to a TV station and wants to make a show it's called basically all about me and it's just all about her talking about herself talking about her life talking about her problems and that's what it is and she's paying like $150,000 an episode wants to do 100 episodes of this show she's blowing through all of her money and that's what it is it's just her you know, putting on this show. It's a really odd, weird movie. Kind of has a vibe of toys as well for some reason to me. It gave me that kind of feel, even though it was nothing like that. It just is. It was just like in that kind of weird wavelength. Like this movie exists. Yes, it does, but it's really strange. Uh, the next one is a Bradley Cooper, Jennifer Lawrence movie from Magnolia, which I don't, I don't think, you know, got a theater release. And it's, um, you know, Serena, and this is basically Bradley Cooper who works, you know, at, at like a lumber factory, you know, lumber yard kind of place where they cut down trees and things like that. His business is in really bad shape and he's starting to lose money. He's had like an accident, you know, by the railroad and he's not really sure how he's going to keep the business. Then he ends up meeting Jennifer Lawrence's character and it's kind of them starting up a relationship and things like that. And then uh, she's kind of going and helping out, you know, at the lumber yard and kind of trying to keep things going, keep people moving and kind of holding her own there. And it was okay. The movie doesn't have a huge plot to this. It's kind of that's really what it is in their relationship and things that happen to them and things like that. But it has on here deleted scenes and some interviews and stuff like that. I liked it, though, but it wasn't like anything absolutely amazing. Uh, the next one from the Warner Archive is um, uh, Wolfen, which is a werewolf movie. I, I thought I saw, but I don't think I'd ever seen this one. It's kind of got like a Columbo kind of like investigation kind of vibe to it. There's this werewolf going around at night, killing all these different people. And the werewolf scenes are really crazy. There's like these strange effects, like with these mosaic and really odd stuff of the werewolf, werewolf's vision when it kills people and it like cuts off their arms. And it's real crazy, like super gory, pretty gory for the time too. Uh, you know what they would get away with back then with an R-rated movie. But it's kind of like these cops though investigating it and trying to figure out who this is. And there's some really cool like trippy stuff in this. And and the, um, the one guy in this, too, 
I don't remember his name, but he was in a lot of stuff in the 80s. I think he passed away like two, in the early 2000s. Um, but really good picture quality. And it's just a cool, you know, different werewolf movie. I feel like probably not a lot of people have seen. Uh, the next one from Cynodyme is a Michael Keaton movie, Blindsided. And this is one of my favorite ones in this update. It's this woman who's a photographer in the, you know, in the in the war ends up, you know, a bomb goes off right by her, and she ends up becoming permanently blinded by it. You know, no vision whatsoever. And it's three years later after this, she's with her boyfriend. They're gonna get married soon living together and you know she goes out to get wine and comes back and the boyfriend's dead and she discovers that and she discovers there's somebody else in the house and then Michael Keaton's character comes in and they're in there basically saying where is it what do we you know where are the things and I'm not gonna say what they are but they're basically trying to find them and she's like saying I don't know you're kind of wondering does she know where they are what they're looking for are they gonna find them what's gonna happen and it was pretty good it kind of one of those movies too that kind of kept you interested like some movies you really get like get kind of bored by it and lose interest by it this one I was really interested in this I thought it was a really good performance too by uh, Michael Keaton uh, the next one from E1 is a really fun, weird movie called 2035. Uh, this is one of my, like, this is a really good, like, I love these kind of odd movies. And, uh, you know, movies that are kind of self-aware as well. And it's kind of a futuristic movie, you know, during the, like, the end of times. It's a character, the guy kind of looks like Dane Dehan. And he has the ability to kind of go from current times up to the future, 2335. And there's weird characters, like, there's really cheesy masks. And, like, look like you got them from the Halloween store and stuff like that. But... He goes there and, um, the guy's doing all this, like, torture to people and kind of making them look, turning them into monsters. It kind of reminded me, like, of an R-rated Twisted Goosebumps with alt girls, like the suicide type girls in it. Um, and that's kind of what it was. And he transfers the one with the alt, the alt girls and really weird stuff. Like, everything you can imagine in this movie, like, but it's kind of like these characters coming after him and trying to get him. And he kind of also reminded me, like, of Eddie Furlong a little bit. But this is a really, really cool, really, really weird one. I absolutely love this. But just go into this one knowing that it's a strange self-aware movie the director you know I saw some posts about it saying how it's supposed to be like a like a real 80s kind of like science fiction movie and that's totally what it is like the shot on video kind of or video releases then uh, the next one from E1 as well is Demon Baby and this is basically about a couple who are going on you know a trip to Scotland you know the countryside taking an RV and she's pregnant at the beginning of the movie, though, she's being questioned by the cops because you find out that people were killed, and the cop is saying, "What happened? And how did this happen? You know, you know, what led this? You do this, saying, believing that she did it." And it's pretty much just them going out on the RV trip and kind of what's happening to them, and then also you're finding out things about her past and kind of discovering there may be more to her relationship and also more to this birth than there is, and that's kind of what it is. And there's also a cop that comes into it as well. I actually liked the one. It doesn't, it's not like a super, super memorable movie, but I did like it. And the next one from Ketchup Entertainment is Debug, and the director of this was the star of Cube, um, you know, uh, David Hewlett, and uh, his brothers in this as well. But it's basically about a group of these kind of hackers, like younger hackers that go into a, uh, you know, like a spaceship that's having kind of problems going on, going in there trying to correct them and figure things out. But the computer in there is kind of doing, its, has its mind of its own, is kind of doing bad things and, you know, killing them and things like that. That. It's kind of got like an Event Horizon kind of vibe to it. Um, I kind of like this one. It had some sort of silly effects, and some of the effects were better than others. Um, there was some stuff too, but kind of like in Cube and like uh, you know Resident Evil, when they're pulling people apart like atom by atom and things like that. I kind of like this one though. It's kind kind of creepy a little bit and some weird deaths. Uh, the next one from Lions Gate. Now this is really odd. It's from After Dark original movie Asylum, and this is basically done like Mystery Science Theater 3000 style. I don't know if it's like intentionally was done that way or not or if the movie was never finished and then they kind of did this to try and finish it because like they ran out of money or something like that I don't know for sure but it's basically about these two guys who are the editors watching this footage it's supposed to be like terrible footage about this bad movie about people go to a sane asylum and start getting killed by the inmates they're watching and basically riffing on the movie going what's he doing in this movie why is he in this movie this is such crap what's he doing in this what well, he's in the crying game and then he's in this like how'd they get him to do this and talking over the whole movie I mean it's, it's kind of, it was okay I mean, if you're interested in that kind of thing and kind of Mystery Science Theater 3000 kind of style, I check it out. But it was really kind of odd, and that's kind of what it was. Uh, the next one from Level Up, uh, Level 33 Entertainment, is um, 
Yeah, yeah, it's uh, the house across the street, and this has Eric Roberts in this, uh, Ethan Emery. Ethan Emery is only in it for a little bit, though. It's kind of about this woman who moves into a new house, and she moves, you know, goes in there, and there's kind of weird stuff happening across the street, weird things going on around her, and she's kind of asking around about it, and people are like, oh, don't talk about this, don't, don't bring that up, that's, gonna, that's a bad thing, and Courtney Gaines is in this, and he kind of is sort of like a real-life Ned Flanders. Like, he was my favorite character in this movie, because he was like, if Ned Flanders came to life, or they had someone play him in real life, Life, that's just who it would be you know and I kept on thinking of him from the burbs a little bit too for some reason but that's kind of what it is is like she's kind of discovering things about going on there and it's not really good and she really shouldn't ask you questions and the last one from Anchor Bay is the dog who saved summer and I watched a lot of these dog movies like I think I've, there's been like five of them and it's you know Dean Cain and then these two other guys with him are they're in all the movies and they're always kind of trying to steal something or trying to do something bad or trying to break into a house and kind of like bumbling criminals it's kind of like got a home alone kind of vibe mixed with remote all the movies kind of have that vibe it's a real throwback like if you like that kind of movie this one though it's the same family from the other ones and the mom is like they've moved to a new place and she's going to work for like decorating this house party thing hopefully nothing goes wrong and hopefully these criminals don't like cause a problem and make it happen but the criminals are trying to steal diamonds this time and that's kind of what it is but these are just like i said really fun kind of silly movies the one criminal too is the one from paul blart who was in the new one and the other guy was the one from uh, the the boxing movie with um well the boxing movies like I believe you ate my trainer but anyway though that's all for this video guys and thanks for watching the shopping video and I'll see you guys later and be looking out for the new update this Saturday.